Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry, we're running a little late. Um, my name is Trish McKenzie and I'm from the Cadbury Kitchen and my pal over here is Melanie Ryan. She also works with me in the Cadbury Kitchen. We spend a lot of our day with chocolate, can I tell you that? And um, we test a lot of recipes, <coughs> which we really enjoy doing. It's lots of fun. She eats less of it than I do. You can tell that, can't you? Anyway, we, uh, we have lots of fun using the fantastic range of Cadbury baking chocolate, so much so that the, earlier this year we put out a, a book which is like a match made in heaven. It's called Simply Heaven Volume 3. Has anyone got this one already? Oh, good on you, you guys down the back. Come on, the rest of you, what have you been doing? <laughs> this book is a, a combination of recipes using Philadelphia cream cheese and uh, the Cadbury baking chocolate range. So whether it's chocolate chips, whether it's milk dark or white, whether it's chocolate melts or whether it's the chocolate block, all made using Cadbury real chocolate, which is in our baking range. Um, you can actually buy this book over at the, the Cadbury uh, pavilion, just beyond the tasting room there. And um, it's $10 at the moment. So it used to be available or we had a big promotion in Coles just recently, just before Christmas. So um, if you weren't able to get it then, then you're able to purchase it here at Taste. But um, other than that, it'll be pretty hard to get. Um, so there's lots of different fantastic ways to use Philadelphia and the baking chocolate. One of the recipes which is in the book is the chocolate chili cheesecake. And I keep falling off my ear. Somebody must have had a big head that had this on, you know. Um, so it's a chocolate chili cheesecake. I guess there's no greater marriage between uh, in food than something creamy and something chocolatey. It's kind of what desserts are all about as far as I'm concerned. And I think probably, you know, one of, my, one of the most enduring uh, recipes for desserts of any sort at any time of year is a good old cheesecake. I guess the beauty of a cheesecake is they're easy to put together, they're full of flavour, you can make them ahead, which is even better. So this one I'm starting just quickly. I've got a couple of blocks of Philly in the mixer here. Um, two 250 gram blocks, so 500 grams of Philly. Before you start cooking with Philly, it makes sense to soften it down. When it comes out of the fridge, it's hard, okay? It's hard to break that down into a nice smooth mixture when it's so hard. So you do need to soften it or allow it to come to room temperature. If you're organised, get it out on the bench, let it do that while you're getting other ingredients ready. If you're not organised and you need to soften it down, uh, usually about 30, mi 30 minutes, 30 seconds on high in the microwave oven for each block. You can cut it up into bits if you like and uh, that will help to soften it down. Then it's at a texture where it will take um, all of the other ingredients in without lumping and give you a beautiful smooth cheesecake. All right, so now that that's done, usually you'd add sugar to a cheesecake. This one's a little bit different. We're using good old condensed milk. Whose mum used to make the uh, cheesecake using condensed milk? One lady. Have you guys not eaten many cheesecakes? What's going on? Are you all asleep? Too much wine this afternoon, maybe? Okay, there is a fantastic cheesecake on the, on the Philadelphia website, certainly, and there are others on the Cadbury Kitchens website also um, that have uh, condensed milk as the basis. It gives a lovely creamy finish and of course condensed milk is lovely and sweet so we don't need to add additional sugar. Alright, once those ingredients are incorporated then we can start add some of the other flavouring ingredients. Now as I said this is a chocolate chilli cheesecake and there's quite a trend these days for having sweet and savoury flavours mixed together. Now chocolate and chilli is not um, a new combination. The um, ancient Mayans and Incas and so forth and Spanish used to do this stuff for it, uh, uh, used to make these combinations thousands or hundreds of years ago, or oh, probably thousands of years ago. And they used to yeah, combine chocolate and chilli together. The first hot chocolates, in fact, were combinations of chocolate, not sweetened as we know it, but chocolate in its uh, more savoury form, I guess, without all the, the uh, milk and the sugar. And um, they used to put chilli and so forth in to bring out the flavours. So for this cheesecake, I'm going to add a couple of spices. I've got some cardamom. And cardamom, we actually we're having a bit of a card cardamom run here. Cardamom's a spice often used in Indian cooking. We actually used it in a delicious um, uh, flourless cake this morning. And some chilli powder, half a teaspoon of chilli powder goes into this cheesecake. 
So it gives it a, a, a real bit of oomph, but if you've not had chocolate and chili together before, you'd be pleasantly surprised with the result. It's really quite amazing, the, the zing that it gives to the chocolate. It's really quite tasty indeed. All right, so something else that we need to add there is some, um, I need a spoon there, that's got a little, needs a bit of a stir up. I've got a little bit of coffee dissolved in some gelatin and hot water as well. So the hot water will dissolve both, both the gelatin and the coffee. So it gives it a sort of slightly mocha flavor and it works really well with the chili also. It's very rich and dark, this particular cheesecake. Now, the best ingredient of all, um, I've got some Cadbury chocolate melts here. This is the dark variety. The great thing about Cadbury, the Cadbury baking range is that it's all real chocolate. And you know, you can really tell the quality of the baking range because it is real chocolate rather than having other additives put into it. And for it to be classed as chocolate, it has to have at least 20% cocoa solids, uh, cocoa butter, I should say, in the chocolate. And you can really tell the difference in texture when it's melted, and certainly the flavour speaks for itself. Now the melts are designed specifically so that they can melt quickly and evenly. That way you don't get a whole lot of hot spotting and burning of the chocolate. But always take special care when you're preparing the chocolate and melting it, whether you do it over simmering water, which is probably the most common method, but probably the fastest method to melt chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fastest method, I might just leave it there if you can hear me okay. The fastest method to melt chocolate um, is actually in the microwave. We'll talk about that in a minute when we're doing the next recipe. Okay, last but not least, in the recipe it actually says that you could softly whip the cream and that will help to lighten the mixture. But um, with the chaos that was reigning supreme here not long ago, I just went, what the hell, we'll just throw it in and let it thicken it up itself. Usually when you add a little bit of uh, a cream at the end and you whip it first, it helps to lighten the mixture somewhat. So if you've got time to do that, of course it's going to make a difference. Frankly, we didn't have time to do it, so I've just added it now. It just means at this stage it helps to give it a good beat so that you actually whip a little bit of air in it to lighten the cheesecake mixture. But it really is a sensational cheesecake and it's really, it's just something quite different. It's really quite grown up and adult flavoured, I guess. And fantastic serve with a nice sort of sticky wine at dessert time. Uh, I started to say about the combinations of flavour with sweet and savoury, probably the most popular at the moment is the, the old salted caramel. Everyone, has everyone had some salted caramel? It actually works really well. The sweetness and that saltiness is, it gives a fantastic sort of combination of flavours. And um, it's really sensational, it's a sensational kick to the taste buds. So, you know, having chocolate and chilli together is not that far off that whole uh, sweet and savoury combinations. That looks great. So that's thickened up beautifully. I'll just turn that down and just encourage some of that mixture off the beaters. If I get a bit excited, the people down the front will get a free tasting. There we go. That's all right, it's the best way to decorate your kitchen wall, I always think. Anyway, I might just pop these out of the way, Mills. I'll give them to you, I'll take that one. Thanks, Dal. All right, so once you made the filling, I didn't think you needed to go over the base again. I think you, you know, everyone must have made a chocolate base before, a cheesecake base before, yes? Everyone, yes? Okay, it's just biscuit crumbs. These are chocolate biscuit crumbs. You could use the standard, um, uh, regular biscuit crumbs if you prefer not to use the chocolate. You just grind them down in the food processor of course otherwise you can put them in the bag and smash them about, uh, seal the bag and smash them with a rolling pin. That's also a good one to keep the kids busy for a little while um, if you haven't got a, a food processor to grind them down. Join them or bring them together with a little melted butter and press them into a 20 centimetre a uh, spring form pan and this has just been lightly greased. I always think it's good insurance to put a little bit of paper in the bottom so that you can actually get it off the base. It is better if you can actually take it off the base to serve it. Um, sometimes if it's being a little difficult then you're going to have to just leave it there but it is nicer if you can actually slide it off the base and that's easy done if there's a little bit of paper underneath. So grease it, whack a bit of paper on the top and then press your crumbs over the top and you can grease the walls of the springform pan too so that it just slips out easily. All right, that looks absolutely luscious. 
I've managed to catch a little bit of that underneath. Hang on, I've got to get back to that. Okay, because that's got gelatin in it and chocolate, it only had two teaspoons of gelatin. That will help to set it, but remember you've also got the chocolate. So normally we'd add a little bit more gelatin for something like this. I've just spotted a couple of lumps. There we go. Never mind, get down in there, you. That's what happens when you talk too much when you're cooking. You miss the lumps. Okay, so that can go and sit in the refrigerator. We usually say around three hours to allow it to set or overnight. As I was saying earlier on in the demonstration, making a cheesecake is one of those perfect things to do a day or two ahead. I mean, Christmas is gone, but if you're having a New Year's bash, maybe you could whip home and do one tonight. It'll be sitting there just in time. Um, they're fantastic because they'll actually develop flavour over time and particularly with the spices in this one, you'll find it would be better tomorrow with that development of flavour with the chocolate, the dark baking chocolate and uh, the spices, the cardamom and the chilli. So into the fridge, we go with that one. Now just... So, <laughs> it's been an interesting day, can I say that? It's been an interesting day. This morning we were making brulees um, which looked absolutely beautiful except we couldn't get our uh, little blowtorch going. So that was really quite disappointing. So in the end they became chocolate creams because, you know, we just were as flexible as we could be. Um, unfortunately our little blowtorch that was like a flamethrower up at Claremont when we were doing our preparation this morning at the Cadbury factory um, just gave up the ghost unfortunately, so that didn't happen. We also realised that we bought that really dodgy springform pan when we packed to come from Melbourne and um, our poor little cheesecake was a little worse for wear when we tipped it out. So anyway, I have just decorated it <laughs> with some of these little... Um, we, what we did was to melt some chocolate and you can get these fantastic sheets um, called cocoa butter sheets or stencils, um, usually at a specialty uh, cake decoration places and so forth and what you do because the cocoa butter goes on th this little pretty pattern you can see here is the actual cocoa butter that's on the sheet and then you put your melted chocolate over it and you allow it to set then when you peel it off you get this beautiful little pattern on the chocolate so you can use a scone cutter to cut it out or you can just randomize cut it all over the place and, um, you know, you can really do some pretty things with it. So this particular number today just need a little bit of extra love. So that's what happened here. What I was going to do, and I will continue to do, if you're into decorating things, and it seems to be a very popular trend these days of decorating cakes and, and making cupcakes and pops and things like that, you know, there's lots of really easy bits and pieces that you can get your hands on to make things look great without it being an incredibly difficult process to put together. So this is a stencil, which is basically a checkered, um, uh, checkerboard effect. And it's made from a sort of a thick plastic. And essentially you can just pop that over your cheesecake and then shake on. You can do it on any sort of cake, but for this we're going to use some cocoa to just bring out that rich dark flavor. So I'm gonna give it a a reasonably good sprinkle with Cadbury Bourneville cocoa, of course. Australia's favourite cocoa, the old Bourneville. So, all you need to do is to sprinkle over the top of your stencil and off it comes. And to finish off, I've got some... Once the moisture of the cheesecake actually starts to work on that cocoa there, and the cocoa absorbs some of the moisture, that actual pattern will become a lot more pronounced. Okay, I've just got a couple of things to finish off here. In the recipe booklet, you'll actually see that there is an absolutely amazing recipe that we tested. Thank you. I'll just whack that back on. Hold still. Hang on. Look, I'm going to push it into the back of my head. There. Where was I? Chili plums. Chili plums, yes. In the book. Let me find that picture. Do you want me to find it? 
Yes, you find it. Story. There's lots of fantastic recipes in the book. There's a section on cheesecakes. There's a fantastic section on ice creams. The ice creams are just luscious. And there's also grown up ice creams too. I like a bit of grown up ice cream. Uh, also, there's um, cakes, there's puddings, there's a special occasions. So here's the cheesecake that we've just done without our little, you know, hide all the floors section around the outside. But the chilli plums are just awesome. It's just a, a very simple sugar syrup. There's some chilli in there, uh, a couple of cardamom pods to keep that sort of flavour going between the cheesecake and the plums. A little bit of lemon rind and 12 plums which are halved. It is absolutely luscious. So it's really worth doing that combination because the, <laughs> the plums are beautiful and sweet and the texture is amazing. And then you've got the chilli going on there as well. So that's our delicious chocolate chilli cheesecake. Easy to prepare and easy to decorate. As I said, those stencils are available at all those different um, cake decorating places. And the other place that you can check out if you're into that is some of the chef's warehouses that sell things for specifically for people in the food industry often have amazing things. If you've got a bit of time just to whip out and have a look around it, you know, you can find some amazing serving ware and fantastic little, you know, tools of the trade that the chefs would use to get fantastic results. All right, onward. The next recipe I'm going to do is one that's actually on the Cadbury website. So it's actually on uh, cadburykitchen.com.au and uh, it's a, a delicious Oreo truffle and uh, chocolate, of course, a chocolate Oreo truffle. And I, you know, I think truffles are perfect for this time of year. Certainly we might have missed Christmas, but um, you know, truffles are good for any time. Sometimes a, a heavy dessert is not what you're looking for after a really special meal. You just want something a little sweet, particularly if you're going to serve cheese and fruit and things like that rather than a full-blown dessert. Um, the other thing is too, like, I don't know about you guys, but like cake pops have just gone absolutely crazy. And um, this is our own little version of a cake pop, if you like. So what we've got in the bowl here is just some Philadelphia again. That's not quite as soft as I had it for the cheesecake because we need to be able to roll the mixture. So there's two basic ingredients to start with, a packet of Philadelphia and a packet of Oreos. Now you can just roughly chop those up. If you want to, you can put them in the food processor and combine them all together. That's fine too. Uh, I just find that because the Oreos are as dark as they are, it kind of becomes really kind of a weird sort of almost black inside. Now, if you wish, of course, this might be the time where you make it a little bit more grown up and add some liqueur, maybe some Frangelico, some Grand Marnier, some Cointreau would be good. Even a bit of Baileys you could throw through if, the, if you can keep it just for the adults, not for the children, of course. Um, you can also add some nuts to it, some roasted almonds, some walnuts, some pistachios would be good too. So essentially you get this, well, if you like, motley looking mixture here. Over time, of course, the Oreos will soften down beautifully with the moisture from the Philadelphia, and then you'll be ready to go. So just mix them together, oh, like so. You don't want it too soft, otherwise it's too tacky for you to roll. Now this particular recipe will make around about approximately 20, maybe a couple more. All you need to do is to, whoops, get about two teaspoons full, and then you just roll. Okay, about that big. Just a bit smaller than a walnut. And roll them. So as I say, somewhere between 20 to 24 of the little balls that you'll get. Then they need to go into the refrigerator and firm before you start working with the chocolate. Okay, so I'm sure you can get the gist of that. This is a perfect one to get the kids involved in, in the kitchen. They can break up those Oreos in their hands, throw them into the bowl, give a bit of a stir through, and then you can roll them into the balls, then they need to set in the fridge. Okay, so now what we've done here is to get them ready ahead. So in demonstration terms, here's some we prepared earlier. And what we need to do with these, Mel, I might get you to get rid of those fellas. Thanks. <laughs> Straight into the bin. Sorry. <laughs> okay, that's all right. You're still gonna get to try them, don't worry. We just uh, thought it was better to have them come directly from the bakery rather than hands in hair 
<laughs> uh, hands, yes, back of tent. <laughs> All right, what we've done here, one of the main things about chocolate is that um, this chocolate, uh, our baking chocolate is real chocolate. It doesn't have other vegetable components added to it. So we need to treat it with a little bit of respect, to be perfectly honest. Real chocolate is always tempered, and the tempering actually means that it stays quite shiny, and it's what gives chocolate its snap, okay? Chocolate is made up of uh, cocoa solids and mass and cocoa butter and sugar and um, uh, milk, if it's milk chocolate, of course. And all those things help to give flavour, but one of the major components, the cocoa butter, is the thing that pulls it all together because it's fat. And we know when fat gets very cold, usually it gets quite hard, and that's exactly what ha happens to cocoa butter. So for when you're melting chocolate, essentially, once you've melted it down, you break the temper. So that means that the, the cocoa butter crystals, and there are a number of different varieties in real chocolate, what happens is that the cocoa butter crystals, they're all lined up like little soldiers in rows, totally go random all over the place. And what you need to do in order to restore the temper is to try and sort of corral them all back into line. So it's a bit like going to a wedding and all of a sudden somebody busts out one of those conga line things and everyone all has to get into a line to all dance and do the zorba or do the, you know, that running bear thing or the chicken dance or, you know, any of those ones where they're in a, a line, essentially. Maybe not the chicken dance, but still, that's all right. You've been going to those kind of weddings, I can tell. Anyhow, so um, what you need to do is to, to treat it carefully. Now, you can temper in a number of ways. Normally, I would say, say for our cheesecake, you don't need to temper that chocolate because it's going into a number of other ingredients. We don't want it to set hard. We don't want it to be shiny, like a chocolate out of a box or an Easter egg. But when you are doing something where it's going to be used specifically for a coating, it makes sense to take a little bit of extra time. So what we've done here, usually you would melt chocolate very gently, and I say very gently, and I mean very gently, okay? No point in putting oomph under chocolate. It's not going to respond to it. You want it to melt gently. And on our website, uh, cabrykitchen.com.au, you'll actually see there are some very specific um, uh, directions there for actually tempering your chocolate. So if, you're going, if you want to do things, we had a lady ring and ask us about what to do. She was making 300 chocolates for a wedding. We went, well, we wish we'd have this conversation with you a little bit earlier because when you want to do something like that, you do need to take a bit of extra care. You need to basically re-temper your chocolate. So for something like this, as I said, we're going to roll the, the truffles in the chocolate. We want the chocolate to come back together virtually at room temperature. Now, most people would just bung the chocolate straight back into the fridge. The problem with that is that it, it still doesn't give the cocoa butter time to get back in its rows, like we said. So when you melt it very carefully, there's more chance of that happening. Now, you can do a couple of things. You can follow the directions on the website using a, a thermometer. Usually, you would heat the chocolate, let's say, to 45 degrees, drop it down to a lower temperature, and then bring it up slightly to around 30 degrees or so. That can take some time and certainly it needs a little practice. You do need to practice that. The other thing you can do, which we've used in the book a lot, is what we call the seeding method, which is kind of like a cheat's temper. And what we would suggest there is you melt your chocolate very carefully and then you melt two thirds of it at once and then add the rest in once the chocolate is melted. Okay, so you would stir that through once the bulk of it is melted and those little bits that are still hard are kind of like reintroducing the temper back into the chocolate. And it should firm very nicely at room temperature. When you put it quickly into the fridge, it will firm quickly, but when you bring it out of the fridge without doing those things, it, it tends to melt very quickly too. So it makes sense to certainly in a situation like this to seed the chocolate, or you can melt it very, very carefully in the microwave oven. And you know what, if you're really keen on doing a lot of chocolate work, it probably makes sense to get yourself a thermometer, okay? Having a thermometer and melting very slowly on a low, temp uh, low power setting, you know, defrost up to about 50%, means that you can control the temperature of the chocolate. 
And you know, one of the biggest revelations to us, we did a big chocolate workshop a little while ago um, with a colleague, and one of the biggest revelations we found was that you're actually better off to melt in the microwave in, obviously you can't melt in metal, but you can melt really well in plastic bowls, as long as they're beautifully clean and dry, because the plastic won't take the heat. You know how you put things into a microwave and the bowl gets hot? Well, that makes a chocolate hot too. So if you've got a nice little plastic bowl, you can actually keep it. If you're keen to do a lot of chocolate work, you can actually keep that bowl separate and just use it for melting chocolate. Or go and buy one. It doesn't have to be expensive. All we want to do is just melt it very, very slowly so that it doesn't actually lose its temper. Okay, we're, we're about ready to lose our temper a few times today, but still, here we are. Okay, so this has been melted beautifully and very gently, and there's virtually no heat in that bowl underneath, okay? So what we need to do here is get busy, and a bit messy, I guess. So these are our little Oreo truffles that are ready to go. We'll get that out of there. Come on, out you go. Where's that tray, Mel? Oh, oh, hang on. I'm on it. Yeah. All right. Now, there are a couple of ways that you can go about this. Mel's going to get the gloves on and get really no, messy. No, no, no. Where are the gloves? I've been looking for the gloves. No, I had them there. <laughs> there you are. Right there. Awesome. So you can either get yourself a couple of spoons. If you go to one of those uh, special chefs, uh, places, you can probably get yourself a special tool for dipping chocolate, which works quite well. I actually think that working with a couple of spoons is often just as, as successful. And you can cover it with chocolate You can cover up any holes. I actually quite like that textured look. Hey, you there, Mills. Okay, just rolling over in the chocolate. Now, of course, this is milk chocolate and we've used the, the milk melts for this one. So just melt it very, very carefully. Try not to have too much excess, otherwise you get quite a large sort of foot underneath the chocolate. Okay, now Mel is going to do something a little bit different. Something that's also quick and easy to do is actually to roll the chocolate in your hand. So it's good with gloves on for this. I'm not going there because I'll get into too much of a mess. But you can actually roll the chocolate in your hand, so that actually gives a lighter coat. Um, if you like, particularly if you're using white, because this is quite dark underneath, sometimes you need to give it a couple of goes, so it's kind of good to have a production line with a couple of pairs of hands. As it starts to firm up, throw it in again and off you go. So, two ways, either with the spoons or in your hands. I think that works really well. If you're doing it like this, this is fantastic to roll it into um, nuts or toasted coconut. That's fantastic for your truffles. But what we thought we'd do today, because cake pops are all the go, we thought we'd kind of make our own little pops. So you can buy these little pop sticks just about everywhere now, even in the major supermarkets. And you can actually poke the little sticks in. And then there are so many different things that you can buy at the supermarket now to decorate these things with. It's just amazing. So there's all sorts of little sugar confections that you can buy that are really cute. Lots of fantastic, um, that's actually beautiful, that chocolate's going off as I look at it. Oh, there's some pink ones. So I've just got some little uh, sugar confections there. Here's some coloured sugar that you can sprinkle on the top. So perfect for a little party. For kids, if you've got something coming up. What else we got there, Mills? Oh, these are crazy, I love these ones. These are good for boys. I don't think boys would be so, excited about those little flowers. Once you've got it on a, the stick, you can actually poke it into these amazing coloured ones. Just poke them in all around. And they can look amazing too. Now you can get lots of terrific blue sprinkles and things for boys. And you can also get some amazing um, animal, little animal confections and things like that. So it sort of goes from tiny little babies all the way up. You just need to think about what sort of direction you want to go with your decorations and then kind of go crazy. So two totally different looking little numbers there, but um, just as delicious as each other. So what we've done here is to put a plate of them together 
Now, these are our ones for the demonstrations during the week. So don't you just get to look at those and go, oh, aren't they pretty? I'm loving those. Look how clever they are. Um, what we've done with those is to pop them into the little um, patty cases too, which are readily available. And you can get all sorts of colours. If you get online, there's just squillions of them to choose from. So we've got the little flowers, we've got some little rosebuds, we've got some little bows on some of them. And, you know, it's just a fantastic way to totally jazz up your little uh, chocolate Oreo truffles. Naturally, you don't have to do any of that. You can just leave them as they are and uh, give them a swipe over with a little bit of uh, white chocolate melted. Um, you could use the white melts for that and just drizzle over the top, and that looks very formal and elegant for a dinner party. But certainly for a, a, a big celebration, it, it's really fun to have something lovely like this going. OK, that's it for us. We had a bit of a late start, but we got there in the end. Do you want to whack those in there, Mel's? Oh, I'll put that one in the red one. So, really easy to put together. And if you follow those simple things that I talked to you about with the chocolate, you won't have any troubles at all. That will actually set beautifully because it's tempered or it hasn't lost its temper in the microwave. Okay, now, um, don't forget, cabrykitchen.com.au will give you all of that information about the different techniques for using chocolate. If you want to see a bit more of <laughs> me, I guess, you can take yourself to the um, Cadbury Kitchen Facebook. There's always some very interesting thing I've put together to tell you, so you can come online and you can, you know, when you make things, you can go, hey, Trish, I made this, it was great. Okay, my husband often gets on there and tells me how great things are. <laughs> Posts very inter interesting information. I have to cull those things every now and again. But uh, he has an assumed name, but I can't divulge that. <laughs> Anyway, thank you very much for being with us. Sorry we uh, were a little late, a little late to get started, but it's been lovely to see you.